Microsoft Flight Simulator has been out for well over a year now and we've got so many awesome payware and free aircraft that we've all been able to enjoy. There's been something for everyone, but there's plenty more to come. In today's video, I go over the hundreds of planes we're getting for the sim, not just planes, but also helicopters. There is plenty to talk about, so I won't keep you around for much longer. Let's get right into this, but before we do, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As you can imagine, a lot of time and effort has gone into this video. Like always, I made one at the start of the year, but this is going to be a much longer one, seeing as we've got more information now. But anyway, let's get right into it. Okay, so I've got my list that's got over 100 planes on. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the guy on the forums that listed out all the freeware aircraft and Microsoft Flight Simulator add-ons.com that have kind of listed out some or most of the payware add-ons. I've combined both of them um, to basically make a comprehensive list of all of the major aircraft that are coming along. Now, I have taken some away. Because as many of you know, some projects that start out with good intentions, often on Discord, often fail. So I don't want to make this list basically redundant, so I have used my own discretion to take some off. And I've also taken the ones off the lists that I found online that don't exist anymore. We'll start off with the major projects of which have been basically confirmed. And then at the end there's also a collection of minor aircraft that won't attract everyone and there's not too much information about, but they're there nonetheless. Let's get right into it. So starting with A2A simulations. Now they've been out for a while making aircraft for plenty of float sims all the way from float sim 2004. They're working on their Aerostar 600 and their Piper PA24 Comanche 250 which is an aircraft from the 1950s. Now the Aerostar 600 has been in the works for quite some time, so hopefully we'll see it pretty soon. The screenshots they show us are few and far between, but hey, they look pretty nice. We have the Piper PA28 command, so I apologise for pronouncing that wrong. There's quite a few of them built, so there's a good chance you've seen them in the sky before, around you, especially by flight schools, with just under 5,000 built from 1957 to 1972. These are both payware aircraft, so you will have to pay for the A2A products. Two awesome flying machines to kick us off. Now moving over to Airplane Heaven, we've got the Avro Lancaster, which is of course a World War II British bomber. And going off their previous versions with FSX and P3D, I cannot wait for this to be ported over to Microsoft Flow Simulator. I say ported over because of course this will provide the bulk, but hey, you can always expect a great product with Everplane Heaven. I really enjoyed their Spitfire. They're also working on a DC-3, which does look marvellous. Who doesn't love a DC-3? Here's a photo of it on the screen now. And a P-51 Mustang. Once again, all of these products are payware. We have got plenty of freeware aircraft in this video today but often you'll find that the most secure developments are payware because of course there's money there they can afford to keep it up. Out of all these ones so far I'd have to say I'm most excited for the DC-3 but let's move on. Now sticking with the military theme although much more recent we move over to the Aerodynamics KC-10. Now this is a freeware project that has come such a long way I'm really excited for it. Join the Discord, the link is in the description, as with all of these, it does look very good. Now this is of course a KC-10, which is a converted DC-10, and it's used for military refuelling and transport. The cockpit does look really good, and this is freeware. That's right, when it comes out, you'll be able to fly this baby for free. I think it looks marvellous. Now we move over to some more aircraft by the Aerosoft team. Now, upcoming, within the next few weeks, I'd imagine, we've got the CRJ 900 and 1000. And this isn't necessarily a new aircraft completely. It's just two new variants. We've already had the CRJ 700 and 550, I believe. The difference, you ask, between the 900 and 1000 basically the length of the aircraft it can carry many more passengers which means also it carries more fuel and therefore has an extended range i've talked about it more in depth than i could on this video so here's a link to that one i know many of you are excited about it because hey the aerosoft crj is really cool so being able to fly it for longer is something to really look forward to again and if you already own the crj 550 and 700 you don't have to pay as much as buying it outright i really like that 
Sticking with Aerosoft, they're also working with a Twin Otter, which I have to say I'm probably more excited for than the CRJ900. This is of course a really versatile propeller aircraft used mostly for island hopping but it can really take on rugged terrain, it's a really cool aircraft. It is payware again, moving on with Airbus, we've got a massive family of aircraft coming with Aerosoft, we've got the A318, A319, A320, A321 and A330, these are all payware and the A330 is taking priority at the moment. We haven't got many screenshots, in fact we've only got one development shot, I think of the early A318 in the sim. But the lead developer over at Aerosoft has confirmed that the A330 has priority. And although we've still got plenty of time between we get our hands on one of these, it's still pretty cool that Aerosoft are working on them. But we don't want to saturate the market too much, so I think in the end a few of these might be weeded out. Seeing as we've already got the fly-by-wire A320 etc. Now coming over to a Sobo, they're working on plenty of aircraft, you might notice I'm kind of doing it alphabetical order here in terms of developers. They're working on the ATR42600 and 72600, of course the French turboprop airliner that I'm sure many of you have had an experience with. This is payware but with a Sobo you can always expect a pretty good price and a pretty good product. Certainly not study level but still something to look forward to nonetheless and you want to be looking out on their development streams to see what they're doing with it. Sticking with a Sobo, the F-18 Hornet which is of course coming with the Top Gun expansion pack except it was, it's not anymore, it's coming on November the 18th and guess what you can get it for free, become the next Maverick. I mean, I am very excited for this one. It was meant to come along with um, Top Gun, but hey, that's been pushed back now to next year, so it is what it is. It's a free aircraft, who can complain? And we've got some really awesome screenshots coming through already. With a Sobo, we've also got, wait for it, 40 new aircraft that you'll be able to get for the, with the Renault expansion pack. Now I will admit 40 new airplanes is slightly misleading um, because we're only getting 4 classes of aeroplanes of which contain 10 slightly different aircraft. By that I mean you're getting 10 variants of the P-51 Mustang, 10 variants of the T-6 Texan, 10 variants of the Aero L-38 Albatross and 10 variants of the Aviat Pit Special S1S. Now I'm going off an article on MicrosoftFlightSimulatorAddons.com alongside the Microsoft Flight Simulator Live developer Q&A and the main differences among these 40 aircraft will be highly modified uh, instrument panels and the fact they'll perform quite differently. Now to get the entry package which includes this four airplanes which is the P-51, the T-6, the L-39 and the Pitt Special S1S without the other 36 variants you'll have to shell out 19 US dollars 99 cents but to get the full 40 plane collection you'll have to put out 60 US dollars or just under. But you will get a different aircraft, 40 slightly unique aircraft. I don't know whether or not that will be worth it yet. I guess we'll just have to see for the time. Let's keep an eye on that one because it could be something big. That will be coming along with the Renault expansion, which hopefully won't be too long away. Although, let's be honest, if they're bringing over 40 new aircraft, we can probably expect some delays. Who doesn't love the P-51 Mustang? I have to say, I'm also pretty excited for the whole new air racing thing. It's going to be very interesting to see how they do that, especially as they're reworking multiplayer. Finally, with a Sobo, we've got an interesting helicopter, I guess you'd call it, the Velocicopter Velocity, the Volocopter Velocity, I should say. Now, this is a... This is a certainly unique aircraft that's designed for a city air taxi. We've got a video of it on the screen now. And I have to say, I'm not too phased by this. This one is actually freeware as far as I know. So we'll get to try it out for ourselves. And it should be released alongside the F-18, I believe, on November the 18th. Don't hold me to it because, of course, things can change and I can get things wrong. And I would like to say, if I'm missing any aircraft in today's video, which I definitely have, be sure you put it in the comments. Certainly an interesting one, but now let's move over. More payware from DC Designs. We've got the Concorde and the P-47. Now keep an eye out on their Facebook page for all the 
the infant here. Concord is their priority at the moment. Of course, the true queen of the skies, let's not lie. She's not going to be completely study level, nowhere near by the looks of it, but it will be an affordable Concord. DC Designs have already released their F15 and F14. They're also releasing a freeware Northrop P61B Black Widow, which is certainly an interesting looking aircraft. Moving over to a freeware product, we move over to the Digital Flight Dynamics A350. This is another Discord project where they're really focusing on bringing developers across the board together on Discord, of course developing this beautiful aircraft. Let's see where it goes, you do have to be careful with freeware Discord projects because a lot of the time they can just disappear if there's minor disagreements between developers, they often split up, we saw that with the Project Mega Pack. So join their Discord and keep a good eye on it, I'm not going to overtly promote any Discord projects anymore because of issues I've had before. I'm sure you guys can understand. Moving on to a project I can 100% get behind is the Phoenix Sim A320. This is a highly realistic A320CO, which stands for Current Engine Option. They've got a website, you can read more from the description, from the link in the description, and my goodness, does it look awesome. Now, it has a price tag with it, and by the looks of it, that will be on the slightly higher side, but for what you're getting, it looks 100% worth it. In collaboration with Real World A320 pilots, this is set to be one of the most anticipated aircraft this year or next year depending on when it comes out. And I have to say the connection between the developers and the community seems to be really strong, really good selling point there. Now moving over to the Cessna 414 by Flight Simware, this is again payware and it, while it was initially planned for P3D, the developers have brought it over to Flight Simulator. We've got some initial teasers and I have to say it does look rather good, some good interior modelling there and it's got my favourite thing, it's got a classic steam cockpit, I really do prefer them over glass cockpits, I know they're not as practical and declining in use but I really do like them. Moving over to the Flight FX Cirrus SF50 Vision Jet. This is still a very early uh, aircraft, it's still very much in early development. It was only brought to my attention on 11th October 2021 by the FS Elite article. They're working in collaboration with Working Title by the looks of it, asking to bring over their G3000. It's still a work in progress, but hey, it looks nice, who can complain? Fly by Wire continue to impress me with their work on their, wait for it, Airbus A380. This is one to watch out for, quite possibly the biggest aircraft, well definitely the biggest aircraft in this video. And hey, you're getting it for free. I mean, that is mighty impressive, I have to say. Fly by Wire have already done so much for the community, and to bring this over is mighty impressive. Join their Discord to stay up to date with all of their news. If you haven't got the Fly by Wire A320NX, what are you doing? Have you been living under a rock? It's a really awesome bit of kit, so I expect nothing more than the best with their A380. Now moving over to two unique aircraft, we've got the Got Friends, Mike Patey's Draco and the Grumman F4F4. Draco is famous for its extraordinary short takeoff and landing performance. Sadly, the real version crashed in 2019, but Pately is rebuilding it. It'll be nice to see it in the sim. The F4F, I mean, it's got some really awesome engine detail by the looks of it. It's got a really cool folding wing design. I'm guessing it was used as a carrier aircraft in World War II, although I'm not necessarily familiar with it. And it seems to be developing nicely, planned for release in 2022, possibly in the earlier months. Moving over to India Fox Tech Out, a company I really adore, they produce some really awesome aircraft. They're working on the SU-31, the F-35 Lightning II, and the Air Amachi M346FA. All three of these are payware, with the F-35 coming over soon. But I would like to say I'm very excited for the F-35, and it should be coming pretty soon. Of course, it's a fighter jet, well known for its carrier capabilities. And the developer has confirmed it works well with Sim Update 6, so hopefully we'll see it soon. Moving over to an airliner, we move over to the Innibuilds A310-300. We've got some awesome screenshots of which I'll show you on the screen now in the TAP Portugal livery. It's a really beloved aircraft, an X-Plane as far as I know, so bring it over to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Really is a no-brainer. Innibuilds really do create well-made aircraft for an affordable price as far as I know, with their Beluga most recently sticking out to me. I've got high expectations for this one. Iris Simulations are creating a Palatis PC9 and PC24. 
as well as a C17 Globemaster. Now we haven't got any screenshots here, we've just got a confirmed message of intent, or at least I can't find any screenshots, maybe I'm missing them somewhere. But I'm certainly very excited for the C-17 Globemaster. Irish simulations have created awesome aircraft already, such as the Grub Tutor. So onwards and upwards with this one. Both of these will be payware, or three of these will be payware. And the C-17 Globemaster, certainly a unique aircraft, of which we haven't really got anything like in Microsoft Flight Simulator so far. Now moving over to Just Flight, we've got some slightly vintage airliners coming over from them. And they've recently released the Hawk T-1 Trainer, but they're also working on the Fokker. F28 Fellowship, make sure you pronounce that one right, as well as the BAE 146. The 146 is an X plane, and I really do like it and really do recommend it if you like these short tall airliners. Of course, the Jumbolino is famous for its four engines only being able to carry just over 100 passengers or less, depending on the variant. It's a really cute little airliner, I think, one of my favourites and hopefully it will be coming over pretty soon. It will be payware, both of these will be payware with the F-28 and the 146. But with Just Flight you really do get value for money. Now we move over to a development which we've known for almost about a year now actually. Fly the Mad Dog X with their MD-80. Certainly well in progress for the sim, it's looking beautiful already. We've seen plenty of screenshots of which I'm sharing on the screen now. It will be payware but hey. With their previous versions in the like of FSX, I can certainly tell you it will be worth it. Now something that's still pretty uh, kept under the radar and we haven't heard too much about it is the Majestic Software Dash 8 Q300 and 400. Now I believe at the moment they're more focusing on X-Plane 11, but they have confirmed their intent with Microsoft Flight Simulator, so who knows, we might be lucky, but I don't want to say this is definitely coming, uh, because they haven't gave us much information since last year. Now we move over to the biggest list in this video with Milvis. Milvis have already produced some awesome aircraft for the sim such as the Corsair and in participation uh, with India Fox Tech, the T-45. Well, we've got some good ones in development as well as ones they said they hope to work on. Ones definitely in development from Milvis would be the MV310 and the DHC2, or de Havilland Beaver. Two rather different aircraft, but nonetheless pretty cool. On top of that, we definitely confirmed that they're working on the ATR42 and 72. That is a really awesome aircraft, and the progress on it so far is looking very good. Now, the thing here that worries me slightly is that they're working in direct competition with a Sobo, and as they don't produce necessarily study level aircraft to the highest degree, there could be a bit of conflict there. But nonetheless, good luck with it. They're also working on the SR-71 Blackbird, which we've seen nothing like this before for any simulator, as far as I can recall. Certainly a recognisable aircraft, although once again, details here are pretty desolate. And on top of that, they're working on a vintage 737-200, which was of course the first mainstream 737 that still sees some commercial service in the most remote communities. Aside from all of these, they're working on an F4 Phantom in the background, supposedly, an F86 and a Baron B55. Plenty to look out from this development company, and I hope most of these projects succeed, because there's certainly a place for them all. No exact release dates here, now moving over to another development team, which I don't necessarily wholeheartedly support from their previous uh, experiences with aircraft, we move over to next gen simulations, although you didn't really come for my opinion I guess. They're working on an Embraer EIJ series which includes the 135, 140, 145 and 145XR. These will all be payware, on top of that they're also working on the Saab 340 and 2000. Saab doesn't seem to get much love in any simulator, so it'll certainly be good to see how that one progresses, although from their previous experiences with their other Embraer aircraft, my hopes aren't raised too high. Moving over to some delightful freeware now, Uribira Jets, they're working on the Embraer E170-195, to including the 175 and 190 in between there. And progress here seems very good for a freeware aircraft, I'd have to say I'm pretty excited. 
please check out their Discord, I really do recommend it. The screenshots and videos they've shown so far are really promising. On top of that, they're also working on a lesser known aircraft by quite a big degree, the Aerostar 601P. Good luck to this team, freeware developers really do need to be pushed on. And it's why I love seeing a proper freeware team who've got everything planned out, that's when it really shines. Now moving over to probably the biggest team out of this list, we've got the PMDG team. Their priority certainly at the moment is the 737 Next Generation, which I cannot wait to see flying those Ryanair medium haul flights from London Stansted, I mean I just cannot wait for it. They're already working on the 737 and progress there, certainly coming towards us fast. They were quite silent for the majority of the year until recently where they gave us a few new teasers. On top of that, they've also confirmed they plan to bring over their 777 and 747. It will be payware and they are quite expensive, very close to £100 and above. Is it value for money? Well, I guess it just depends how often you use it. For the most of you though, if you're a diehard simmer, I'd say yes. They're very active on their forums, but it can be very hard to get some details out of them. So make sure you keep an eye on my channel and I'll let you know when there's some awesome news. Thank you so much for sticking with me this far. We're, we're quite a while over halfway through now. I thought I'd use this time for a short break before we move into some more awesome aircraft. So go get a glass of water. If you're looking for an awesome present, I've got my new merch out. I've got some retro themed posters. I'm very proud of them. We've got a Buckingham Palace one with a 747 flying over. World Travel Airline 747 retro poster and a beautiful London night scene one. They're all available from the link in the description. Please do check it out. It does mean a lot. Back to the aircraft. Sticking with Payware Airliners, we've got Quality Wings with their Boeing 787 collection. Sadly, not much news here. I'm gonna guess they're still working on it. They just don't like media releases. It's basically an enhanced study level 787. I know many of you will be like, why do we need one? We've already got one in the sim, and that's a fair enough point. But this just takes it a step further. Now, another very, very vintage airliner. In fact, one of the first major mainstream airliners. We've got the Lockheed L1049 Super Constellation by Red Wing Simulations. Now, this is a company that really sticks out for me. They're providing plenty of details about this product, plenty of screenshots, plenty of roadmaps, and I think it looks really good. Hopefully it won't be too long going off their roadmaps, they're about, I don't know, getting close to 80% there, so hopefully we'll see it pretty soon. As with all of these, the link is in the description, go check it out, I think it looks really beautiful. Moving over to some more freeware, we've got the Rotor Sim Pilot Airbus H125, which is a freeware helicopter. Progress here seems secure and it looks like a very good project. Rotor Sim Pilot is a YouTuber, as far as I know, who's got a YouTube channel dedicated to helicopters in Microsoft Flight Simulator. He's worked on a few, I believe he's also working on the Robertson R44. It will be a nice addition to many of the helicopters we've already seen in the sim. And although they are quite a rare sight, let's be honest, with only a few models out there, they're certainly increasing. And with a Sobo promising to create a helicopter flight model pretty soon and release it pretty soon. Hopefully they'll start popping up a bit more. It will be freeware and there's plenty of development updates available in video format from the link in the description. Sticking with freeware, Sim4 Flights are working on a freeware Airbus A350 once again. Well with most of the freeware projects we don't get a release date or anything. So we're just working off what they say on Discord. Now the last development update with this one was from August, which does worry me a bit, but I hope it continues on well. It's a freeware A350, so who can complain? Another awesome team are Synaptic Simulations, who are working on a freeware Airbus A220-100 and A220-300. As I said, it's freeware and you can join their Discord in the description. From the screenshots provided so far and as well as the videos, it looks really promising. And it's an aircraft I pretty much want in the sim anyway, due to its versatility. Back to the payware, we move over to TFDI Designs with their MD-11. Now this was only announced relatively recently, I believe at FS Expo. But so far so good, it's looking really awesome. I feel like the older McDonnell Douglas aircraft don't get as much love as they should as they kind of fade into the past. 
and leave our skies sadly. Their interview with FSLE showed that they plan this on being a proper study level airliner, so who can complain, but of course you'll pay the price for it, I imagine it will be pretty expensive. Moving into our final two major projects, we've got the Whiskey Jet Simulations Airbus A220, which is a payware A220. Sadly with this one as well, I'm not too sure how long they'll be keeping up with it. They're saying that progress is slow at the moment, and that was eight weeks ago when they said that on their Facebook book but if they do continue with it, which I really hope they do, it does look awesome. Finally, Wing 42 are working on a Boeing 247D. It's a really old aircraft coming in at 90 years old, or almost 90 years old, and she was pretty rare at the time. And while it's not an aircraft for me, I'm sure people will find its place. Now I put Wing 42 in the main list because they've already released some add-ons for the sim, so it's almost guaranteed to be released but keep a good eye on it it's certainly a vintage aircraft by quite a few years i think it's safe to say the cockpit does look really good with some good old textures in there and it's interesting to see the instruments of the time there's the major list i don't want to keep you around here for too long but as you can see there was plenty of aircraft there certainly unique what sticks out to me would be the pmdg 737 as well as both the atrs via sobo and milviz but the winner has to be fly by wire with their airbus a380 which is freeware that is mighty impressive tell me what you're excited for and finally, these last few aircraft are aircraft where I can't find information to report on necessarily. I've just seen it on the forums or whatever. Or I think they appeal to a smaller niche. I'm going to display them on the screen now and you can find out more in the description if that information is available. But to put it bluntly, I don't want this video extending on for too long. And I would like to say a massive thank you to all of you for watching. What stands out here is Foxtrot Oscar Simulations with their aircraft, their Hawk Hawker Hunter, the Takano and the L39. We don't get much information here, they are a DCS kind of styled company and this all comes off their Facebook page. And I still think this is very early days for these aircraft. And of course there's an F4 Phantom on there by Simworks, but sadly not enough information here for me to report on them like I did with the other ones. I have missed out some freeware aircraft and probably payware aircraft let's be honest because I'm only human so I do apologise. If you would like to notify me to any projects that I have missed out be sure you put them in the comments. This video has taken a lot of time in research, getting the photos and videos together, editing and releasing it so I do hope you've enjoyed. If you want to show your support be sure you hit that subscribe button, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, join my Discord and hit that like button. Also, leave a nice comment down below, it really does motivate me on. I've released my new merch collection as I said in the middle of the video with some awesome retro posters. We've already got some orders through, which is really impressive. I hope you guys enjoy. Last thing I want to say is a massive thank you to my channel members. Thank you to Captain Matt Russell, Jesse Wiseman, Ethan Bubeck, Simon Schmidt, Erwin K, Fanny Leibenberg, and hello. You guys really do help me out. And if you want to become a channel member to get some exclusive perks, consider clicking that blue join button. But from me today, that is all. I'll see you around. Bye-bye.